once again to It's a Mystery. We're going to be investigating some of the most incredible mysteries you're ever likely to hear. Tristan and I have been searching out some amazing stories that are going to astound and baffle you. And together in the studio we'll be attempting to solve those unbelievable mysteries that gobsmack us all. We revealed the amazing true story of how a potted palm literally came to life. We find out how a local news bulletin carried sinister messages from outer space. And we invite you to solve the mystery behind the disappearance of a priceless diamond. Right then, I don't know how to say this, but do you think it's possible for a plant to have a mind of its own and to be able to move and make sounds in order to communicate? Sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? But it's a mystery how a plant appeared to have a life of its own. Rachel Myers was really pleased when she arrived home with her new potted plant. The woman in the florist had even said that she had not seen such a stunning plant for years. Rachel felt that the plant deserved pride of place in her house. She decided to find a spot in her lounge that would show the plant off to its full potential. After rearranging her furniture, she settled for a spot directly in front of the window, so when people came to visit, they could admire its beauty. The only thing that remained to be done was to water her pride and joy. As Rachel began to water the plant, she suddenly heard a noise. What was it? Where was it coming from? Baffled, she thought it had come from the direction of the plant. Realising this was absurd, she continued to water it. This time, there could be no mistake. The noise was getting louder. Steve? Steve, I've just heard a noise. It's coming from the plant. Don't be silly. You're just hearing things. No, no, I'm not. Things began to get even more mysterious. Not only did the plant continue to make a noise, but now the soil was beginning to heave and bubble. <sighs> Spooky stuff. So why was the soil bubbling and heaving? Maybe the plant really did have a mind of its own and was trying to tell the woman it just wasn't thirsty. Maybe it was haunted. What do you think? Well, let's take a closer look and see how this mystery unfolds. Rachel decided to call the florists where she bought the palm. I think you'd better come over quickly. There's something wrong with the plant that I just bought from you. It's got a mind of its own. It keeps making squeaking and hissing noises, and now it's started to move around. I think you'd better come over as soon as possible. I'm so glad you're here. OK, OK, calm down. Let's have a look. Come and see. Come inside. I really don't want to touch that. I think I'll call the police. The mystery of the moving plant got deeper. Police. I wonder if you could help me. We seem to have this problem with the plant. But what on earth could the police do? I believe there's been a disturbance. Uh, what appears to be the problem, ladies? It's my plant. Come and take a look. The plant was still heaving and making strange noises. I'm afraid I don't really know much about plants. Uh, I wouldn't like to disturb it. I think I'll call the station. As the plant continued to move and the earth bubble, he quickly explained the problem of the mysterious moving plant to his superiors and they responded with some very strange advice. Yep, OK, if that's what you reckon. They advise that we call the zoo. Uh, should we try that? Can I use your phone? Yes. Yeah. 
So what was going on? Well, believe it or not, it turns out that a zookeeper did turn up. He took the plant back to the zoo and it was there that the staff discovered one of these. Yep, a large female tarantula and her 50 young were actually discovered nesting among the roots of the woman's plant. And how did they get there? Well, it turns out that they must have accidentally been in the pot when the plant was imported from Southern Europe. Very unusual, but true. Right, I have got a mystery for you two to try and solve, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. An intriguing case, very similar to this one, baffled detectives during the 1920s. Mm -hmm. Now, what I challenge you two to do is work out who stole the diamond and how. Yeah, okay. I don't think you can uh, baffle us, but, but, you know, give it a shot. I shall have a we go. We accept the yeah. challenge. Okay, well, just watch carefully because the clues are actually all in there. Right. Picture this, a museum in the middle of the city is displaying a fine collection of precious stones. Among the amazing gems is a glittering and fantastic diamonds, one of the most expensive in the country. May I ask you how much the diamond is worth? Priceless, madam. I couldn't put a figure on it. Oh, he looks a bit dodgy, doesn't he? He does, doesn't he? Oi, you two. Shh, keep watching. Of course, after a while, you can get a bit bored with all this glitter and sparkle. But I must say, some of these rubies do look a little grubby. Really, madam? By this time, another visitor was looking around the museum. to say that you really have done a wonderful job on these displays. I haven't seen a finer sight since I went to visit the Crown Jewels. Why, thank you, madam. But then they suddenly heard, Oh, my goodness! The diamond, it's vanished! Let's stop the action there. One of them must have the missing diamond. I'm afraid we're gonna to have to search them. They're gonna to have to empty their pockets and their bags and place all the items on the tables. So the curator has got a handkerchief and a watch. The second lady, she's got a purse and a compact case. And finally, the first has got gloves, a hanky, a purse, and some chewing gum. Ah, very interesting. Okay, so they've mm. emptied out all their stuff and still the diamond is nowhere to be seen. Yep, and I challenge you to figure out what happened by looking at these clues. Yes, all right, all right. Okay. we'll get it. We'll do it, we'll do it. Ah, 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 ah. Look, uh, maybe this lady has hidden it in her compact case. Hey, uh, Ah, yeah. Completely empty. See, it's not big enough. It's a no. big diamond. Yeah, it's and I bigger. think that this lady might have hidden it have away in this internal purse. You Go know, she then. hasn't. No, nothing. So where could it be? Have you spotted it yet? What do you mm. think's going on? Come on, guys, think hard. You've got all the clues there. Yeah, all right. Uh, We're professionals. Are you going to mount it? Got it. Got it. And over there. Come on. Okay. Now, okay. If you think about it, the curator himself was standing here to begin with, and yeah. he did look a bit dodgy, he did, didn't he? He did, he looked uh, nasty. I'm thinking that, that maybe he wrapped the diamond up in his hanky and hid it somewhere so that he can come back later and pick it up. Uh, let's see. No luck yet, guys? Um, no, not yet. Hold on, hold on. Ah. Got it. There it is, uh, look at that. Oh, that's disgusting, chewing gum on it. <laughs> there was a lady chewing gum before, wasn't there? So it must have been that lady. Ah, <laughs> here it is. Yep. Chewing gum. It was in her purse. I do believe you've cracked it. You betcha. And here's exactly how the crime was committed. As the curator was interrupted by the second lady and got into conversation with her, the first lady, who was chewing the gum to get it sticky, took the diamond from its display, stuck it to her gum, then she must have stuck it firmly to the underside of the display where no one would ever think to look for it. 
Yeah, so when everyone was searched, the diamond was nowhere to be seen. And it only remained for the lady to creep back later and try to take the diamond with her. What do you think is out there in space? Do you believe there are other forms of life out there? Well, it's a mystery how an alien voice entered the homes of thousands of people. It had been a hectic day. A husband and wife had been into Reddick shopping. As they started to unpack their bags, Joe moved over towards the TV. Do you mind, darling? I'll just catch the results. Well, I hope they won. And here are the football results for the southern region. Maidstone 1. Wimbledon, In the nearby town of Newbury, a lady was looking forward to a first sit down of the day. It had been the local school jumble sale and she'd been running the popular bread and cake store. So with a cup of tea and some biscuits, she kicked off her shoes and switched on the telly for a bit of light relaxation. Twenty-four miles away on the outskirts of Winchester, a schoolboy was recovering after a really hectic week. He'd spent all day Saturday revising for his exams. He planned to go on a bike ride the next day, so he switched on the telly, flopped down on his bed and got ready to watch the weather forecast. Tonight will be dry with little cloud. The lowest temperature will be 4 degrees centigrade. Wind, moderate westerly. Tomorrow will start sunny in the east, but rain will... So what? A bunch of people come home after a busy day and watch the telly? Happens all the time, doesn't it? Well, these were just three incidents. But all over the region, people were watching their TVs. And in the next few minutes, several thousand others experienced something that will stay with them for the rest of their lives. Good afternoon, it's five o'clock. This is the news from Southern. At five o'clock, the news came on. As a Bognor Regis company announced that it was going into voluntary liquidation of this day. A little while into the bullet, something strange began to happen. A booming voice began to drown out the newscaster. What? Meanwhile, the lady was sipping a tea. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. George! Come and have a look at this! The strange thing was that the newsreader continued to read the bulletin, seemingly unaware of what was going on. The alien voice was swamping the transmission. Meanwhile, in Winchester, the boy was dozing on his bed when he was awoken with... But only a few rules are made aware of the evil forces that can overshadow their judgments. This is the voice of Guadalajara. At first he thought that he was dreaming, then he realised that the weird voice was drowning out the problem. Mum! Mum, quick, come and look at the telly! What an incredible story, and it really did happen way back in 1977. A voice from outer space drowning out a news bulletin. In fact, it happened to all the people who were receiving the southern news from the Hannington transmitter. There were hundreds of other worried viewers, and many telephoned the police. Others called the Southampton studios of Southern TV, wondering what on earth had happened. The weird goings on, which many believe to be an alien voice, even made the papers. So who or what had caused the eerie mystery voice? After much investigation, it was thought that the reasons for the voice was nothing more than a practical joke. However, no human was ever traced. No one ever came forward and it was never heard again. So perhaps the mystery voice wasn't a hoax at all. Could there really have been an alien interception? What do you think? Hello, my name's Ian Pierce, and I live near a small town called Battle in Sussex. Battle is the actual site of the Battle of Hastings, which took place in 1066. Something very weird goes on here from time to time. When I was young, my uncle owned a farm close to the historic site of the battle. At one end, there was a stream with a pool in which we would bathe on hot days. One day, I was making my way down to the pool when I noticed the stream had turned quite red. 
I was startled by the change in colour since there seemed to be no obvious explanation for it. However, the battlefield is also known as Senlac, which means the lake or the watercourse of blood. According to local legend, the reason for the water running red is that it's coloured by the blood from the wounded soldiers from the Battle of Hastings. Ugh! Sounds a bit unlikely, doesn't it? A pond and stream that turn red when it rains. Could it really be mysterious blood from a battle that happened over 900 years ago? Or is there another explanation? What do you think? Well, Ian did some of his own research. Well, the water in the stream often turns red when it rains. In fact, it's caused by naturally occurring iron compounds in the soil. After a shower, these particles react with the rainwater and turn it a rusty red colour. Ah, so there was an explanation. It's just that in the old days, local people didn't know about all the different particles in the soil. So they invented the story of the spilled blood to explain the red water in the stream. And believe it or not, it isn't only battle that has water which changes colour. On the outskirts of Manchester, there's a stretch of canal called the Bridgewater Canal. It too is an orangey red colour because of a leakage of iron compounds. Maybe there's some water near you that does the same thing. It's a mystery how a tablet can clear up a pain. Don't you think? Yeah, actually, a little it's tablet. weird, isn't it? A little tablet. No pain. Yeah. OK, well, let's take a pain like, say, a headache. Now what does a headache feel like? Well I'd say it feels like there's a sort of thumping pain in your head, a little bit like this. Mm. What do you reckon Gail? A headache? Yep, definitely. Yes. And there are lots of different ways to get rid of a headache. Taking a tablet is just one of them, but if someone does take a tablet, like say a paracetamol, how exactly mm. does it work? Well, when a tablet is taken into the mouth, it glides down the throat and it begins to dissolve. Now the medicine in the tablet has been specially made so that it will pass through the stomach without getting damaged. It then reaches the small intestine where it's dissolved by chemicals and it's eventually absorbed into the bloodstream. And it's carried all over the body in your network of blood vessels until it reaches the area that hurts so it can act right at the site of the pain. So in this case, that's a headache. Now once the tablet has reached the area of pain, it doesn't actually stop the thumping, it just stops pain messages getting to the brain. The thumping is still there, it's just that the effect of the tablet has stopped the pain. So if someone has a headache, it can help them because it stops them actually feeling the pain until the headache goes away. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So say I've bashed my thumb and my <laughs> thumb's throbbing. Well. A tablet stops the pain in exactly the same way. The tablet is swallowed, it gets absorbed into the bloodstream, it's carried all around the body. When it reaches the part that hurts, it does its job. It doesn't actually stop your thumb from throbbing, it just stops your brain thinking that it hurts. It's amazing, isn't it? Clever. Now Clever. look, do me a favour. If you have got a pain, then tell someone about it. And whatever you do, don't take any tablet or medicine without an adult or doctor saying. Obvious, isn't it? And you know, there's an even better way of getting rid of a headache. Go on, then. Do you want to know what I yeah, do? Go on, go on. Go on, go well, on I go ahead. up to my room, switch the light off, and go to sleep. Ah, oh, oh, brilliant. Good idea. idea. Masterstroke. I'll give you one of those now, actually. So that's it, a few more of life's mysteries solved. Join us next time and we'll delve into some more. But here's one last mystery for you. A woman stands holding an egg in her hand. She drops it two whole meters without breaking the shell. How can this possibly be done? Can you solve it? We'll reveal the answer next time. Last week's final mystery was this. If a man went for a long walk without an umbrella and he didn't wear a hat or take refuge under a shelter, how come not one single hair on his head got wet? The answer is, it wasn't raining.